Good evening from the Portland Museum of Art. I'm New Center Maine's Pat Callahan. And I'm Rob Caldwell. This is a special night for us, for the entire New Center Maine crew, and I think it's not too much of a stretch to say, really, for all of the state of Maine. It's not exactly breaking news. You may have heard about this <laughs> announcement before. But Bill Green is retiring after 47 years. Now that is a long time to do anything, but it doesn't have to feel like a long time as long as you're having fun doing it. So join us as we celebrate the life and career of a kid from Bangor who made good. William Charles Green made his first mark on Maine when he arrived on September 2nd, 1953 at Eastern Maine General Hospital. Five kids. Dad was a brakeman on the railroad, like me, you know, very emotional. I think he was a very smart man. Mom was very proud. She immigrated from England at the age of 10 and met my father during World War II. So we were baby boomers, five kids, and it was loud in my house. And uh, I think we we're all smart, and I think we we're all trying to go places, and we all have kind of my father's sarcasm and my mother's pride. Success usually only comes after failure. Bill's career path really began with a setback being fired from McDonald's over, well, let's call it a French fry misunderstanding. You know, I went home, I was crying. You know, I, I mean, I thought I'd never get another job. Yeah. And my father said, heck with him, just go get another job. And in the process, in a day or so, I heard Channel 2 needed a cameraman and went over. And I mean, just the idea that I might work at Channel 2, I couldn't imagine it. So excited. It was St. Patrick's Day, 1972, when Bill found his life's work. His duties included setting up the studio and running camera for the live broadcasts of the morning shows, My Backyard and Dialing for Dollars. Hold up my phone. Right to the regular opening, okay? Hosted by that icon of Bangor TV, Eddie Driscoll, and then for the TV2 News 6 o'clock report. He thought TV was magic, but Bill didn't want to stay behind the camera. Imagine having me around the studio. I wanted to be in front of the camera, and my interests were like I was a production guy. My interest was in news. You know, I'd run over to the news department, you need anything, you know. In June of 1975, while still attending classes at UMaine, Bill was given a six week trial as the on air sportscaster. Thinking he wouldn't succeed, he asked sales manager Margot Cobb whether he should do it. Margot told him, Nothing ever changes around here. You'll be on for 30 years. Make that 47, and she was spot on. Some of the locals say that fella Duke, a pacer, has a chance of breaking the track record here tonight. Others say that he doesn't have a chance. I guess that's what makes horse races. Bill Green reporting from Bass Park. Part of Bill's secret to success was a strong work ethic. He is a guy who always answers the bell. You know, I was plan B my whole career. I don't think I was ever the, the, a star. I, I, I worked, I came to work every day, and I was always there. The sports beat took Bill from the high school field to the big leagues. It's all over. The Red Sox are the new division champion. Finally, the game. Our seats were in the auxiliary press box, and thanks to modern technology, we can show you where we were. And Bill set a high bar for other young and eager broadcasters who came along, including yours truly that you always have to keep your eyes and ears open for that next big story. You tore that off the AP machine and I'm at proud. the end of the 11 o'clock newscast yeah. on December 8, 1980. Okay, and it says, please say a man tentatively identified as former Beatle John Lennon was shot and wounded, blah, 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 the last line. Police uh, say they have a suspect and describe him as a local screwball. But one of, it's like backing up first base on a bunt when you're a catcher. You run down there a hundred times, and one time you're a hero. So I would finish sports at like 11:25 or six. I'd walk down, and I don't know if there was an alarm on the AP machine, but you know, ding, ding, ding. Here, oh, got to get this to Pat. And I ripped it and ran down, handed it to you, and we got that on the air that night. And I don't know if the other guys did, but if you were watching Channel Two in 1979 and 80, you got some young guys that were trying. Bill also learned from another local media legend, Bud Levitt of the Bangor Daily News. Bud's beat included the Red Sox, but he really made his name covering the outdoors, and readers loved it. Bud showed Bill that there are countless stories to be told about Maine sportsmen and women, and you might as well have fun while you're doing it. Bruce, I got a trivia question for you. Okay. What do Bill Green, Bruce Glazier, and Alfie Mishu, the Maine goalie, have in common? <laughs> I don't know. We all went to Maine, and we all had 2.1 averages. 
Oh, yeah, Ours was a GPA, a great average. <laughs> this is a goals against the average. Best I can do. That's great. I think sports is for everybody, not just the sports fan, because the people on the street are talking about the Red Sox, they're talking about the Patriots, and they're talking about human interest things that, are, that occur within sports. The concept for the Green Outdoors and My Hometown newscast segment, and later the Bill Green's main program, grew partly out of the fact that as a kid, Bill didn't have access to a lot of what Maine has to offer. And so I grew up with a bit of an inferiority complex, does it sound it? And that's where the don't go bragging line comes from. But we don't, you know, I, I want physical education to be meaningful. I don't want it to be in a gym playing kickball or dodgeball. Those are good games. But, you know, I want to, I want to give kids access to paddling, to sailing, and to, you know, hiking and reading a map and climbing Katahdin and all those things. I'm proud of the state. Um, you know, again, when you're the underdog, you know, and uh, you're the underdog again and again, I uh, start to get mad and fight back a little bit, and so maybe that's what I tried to do. That pride in his hometown and the state shone through in all of Bill's work, not just the recreational segments. I love Maine history. I think uh, Maine has contributed a great deal, and I think we, we continue to do so. Job offers from other markets came along, but Bill never heard one good enough to make him leave home, especially after he met the former Pam McCormick. After a few setbacks, Bill smartened up and married Pam in 1986. The arrival of their son Sam and their daughter Emily only strengthened Bill's main roots. The new millennium saw the birth of the program that solidified Bill's brand as the go-to guy for stories of the people and places that make Maine unique. Welcome to Bill Green's Maine. This is an ambitious project for a Maine television station. Every Saturday night at 7, we'll be checking out a different part of the Pine Tree State, and we hope that you'll make Bill Green's Maine a regular part of your Saturday evening viewing. The show took up its weekly Saturday night slot in January of 2001. Before you knew it, the program had rolled on for 18 years. It might be fair to say we don't know any better, or it's what we grew up with. But there's no doubt about it. Mainers from Portland to Millinocket prefer Red Snapper hot dogs. Part of the reason I'm retiring is because I want to put a, a proper end to it. I want young people to see, you know, you can work in this business, work here for a career, and you can end it and, and, and go about your life happily. What am I going to do, 10 more shows? I've done, I think, 420. Uh, I'm happy with it. I, I, I'll miss it. I love it. But it's time. And remember, Bill, the best part of working is working together. <laughs> <laughs> Would you please welcome Maine's own Bill Green. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thank you. I just moved it out of the light. Thank you. We got to stay on time. There we go. We got to stay on time. This is live. Now, I'm one of the many people who can say, you took me under your wing. Forty years ago when I showed up at WLBZ, I didn't know much about Maine. But you taught me everything I know, but not everything you know. Well. And, and we like palling around even when you tried to kill me. <laughs> Pat and I were going to a hockey game at the University of New Hampshire. Go, Cat! And I was driving the Ford Fiesta, and I was racing through Portland during a blizzard. <laughs> and I got caught in a rut. It threw me down into the ditch in between the two lanes, and I'm going off the road. I knew Pat was young and inexperienced. <laughs> and I thought I was pretty cool. I said, be cool. And Pat goes, I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> we live to tell the tale. Yeah, and the best part was I was able to put a reverse back up and take off hey, again. It's Maine. <laughs> well, that is just one of the memories that we're going to be sharing as the evening goes on. We've got great moments from on camera and off camera as well, all coming up as the hour rolls on. Now. We do want to hear from some other folks, and you'll be hearing from them throughout the evening, friends and admirers of Bill's who wanted to weigh in at his farewell. Hey, Bill. Stephen King here, and uh, I want to wish you a very happy retirement. Uh, many years of doing whatever you like to do in the main woods and the main roads and the main fields. And my one big regret is that we never got together for Bill Green's Maine. But... In another life, we will. Have a great retirement, man. Take care. <laughs>